Hello, uh, my name is Lisa and for today I wanted to do a run through the Ableton interface that I did before, but uh, I lost the content on Twitch and so I will have to, or I will do it again and then um, can download the stream afterwards and put it somewhere. So this will be the complete beginner's guide through Ableton, or at least um, going through the interface stepwise. And if you don't know what Ableton is, uh, Ableton is a music production software, and it looks like the interface that's on one of these sides of me. Uh, that it looks like the background that's open and uh, it's a digital audio workstation you can produce music in it um, it's great for electronic music DJs use it uh, I use it for making my music and yeah in an attempt to get as many people involved with music production I wanted to guide you through the interface. So I hope you've installed Ableton. Uh, if not, there's a 90 day free, free trial, I think, uh, on the website that you can find. And yeah, once you've downloaded it and opened it, uh, you will see this interface. If I'm correct, maybe the colors of mine are different. So to get the sound working, let's start by opening your preferences. I'm working from a MacBook, so if you don't see preferences or if it looks different, um, I hope you can find it either way, in a different way, but yeah. Uh, you can either find preferences or hit command, comma, um, and select an output device. So if you're working on a MacBook or if you're working on a Windows, you might need to install a driver. Uh, I will write that down later. If not, uh, if you're using a MacBook, you can select your external headphones or your speakers. Um, using audio for OBS right now such that you can hear everything. Let me see if this is working. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, you can select your buffer size. If you have a bigger buffer size, you can... Um, if you get bigger projects, bigger, like, make bigger projects, then at some point the computer can be a bit uh, over-occupied and you can increase the buffer size such that uh, the project still runs smoothly. And yeah, if you want to test where it works, you can hit the test zone and see whether it works. And as you can hear, I think it's working from my side, which is great. Okay, so there's a lot of preferences that you can, can select. Uh, as I showed, I used the midi dark maybe if you start you get it start with light but i don't really like that so ah no mid light is default mm. well i went with mid dark so let's see um i'm having some guidelines open um, so this is the ableton interface you can switch the view. So this is the arrangement view. It's a horizontal view. It's for arrangement because you can place samples and sounds over a timeline. And there's the session view, which looks like this. And with the session view, uh, you can work really great with loops. So you can have an audio piece and loop it and then have different loops play at the same time to see how it sounds. 
usually I work with uh, arrangement view but sometimes I start working out with a session view and then once you start building the track up uh, switch to the arrangement view so um, let us see there's two types of tracks we call this entire row it's basically like a row we call it a track and uh, there's the audio track and there's a MIDI track the audio track um, is looks like an audio file so if you see for example here let's find a loop a flute loop go to samples click flute loop if you can't hear it maybe this is turned off then it doesn't play but if you turn it on you can uh, you can hear the sample when you click on it um, and then you drag it into your into the audio track and if you drag it in then you can see it as an audio file a MIDI track on the other hand uh, needs an instrument on there so with a MIDI with a MIDI track you can draw notes you can you can draw notes and then uh, have a virtual instrument in there and it will play the sounds from the virtual instrument. So let's try that. If you would select a part of the MIDI track, you click and you drag, say the first four bars, you right click and say insert MIDI clip. And then you can adjust, adjust the MIDI clip. Um, it shows the first four bars. Let's see what we could do. We could draw some notes by clicking in this field. So this field opens and you see this piano on the side. You can hit this little headphones button again uh, and click some notes. Now you go in the sidebar and go to instruments. You select operator, which is the built-in synth of Ableton. And then you hit play. And it will play the inst or like the notes that you've drawn, it will play that according to uh, according to the, to the notes that you draw. So you can also select a different instrument. You can go through all these different sounds. That's a weird one. So yeah, now we have, let's, uh, Let's go through the interface though. What you can see is this sidebar. Uh, we already clicked through some of it right now. There's a search bar where you can find things that you're looking for. There's these different categories, say sounds, drums with different drum racks that you can put on a MIDI track instruments that you can put on a MIDI track, audio effects like a reverb or a delay that you can put on a track, MIDI effects like an arpeggiator, I will get into that later, but you can put them on a MIDI track. Um, you can install plugins, VSTs to, um, to have your own sort of it's sort of like an add-on for for the software, and then you can uh, you can go through clips or samples. I think those are the most important ones. I never use Groove so much, but it's basically like you can 
put it on a sample, then it plays it, or put it on a track and then it plays the track with a certain groove. But I haven't used that too much, or maybe on a MIDI track. Um, yeah, but for now, I think the most important one will be the samples and the instruments. Mm, if you go on top here, this is the beats per minute, this little counter. So if you hit this, these dots, it's the metronome. And if we play now, the metronome will tick uh, in a 4-4 four, four bar with 120 beats per minute. And if you increase the BPM, it will go faster. And if you lower the BPM, it will go lower. I mean, that maybe makes sense. Uh, to change it, you can either click and drag it up or down to increase or de decrease the BPM, but you can also uh, type a number there. So let's keep it on 120 BPM. Let's turn the metronome off for now. If you want to, and you have like a certain feeling for what kind of BPM you want, you can also tap. And then there will be like some sort of estimate. And then you can either round it up or down as you want. Then you will find me hitting space a lot. If you hit play and you press space, it will stop again. If you press space, it will start from, from the point you have, you have selected. To select a point, you can tap somewhere on the audio or MIDI track and it will start playing from there if you hit space or, or if you just press play. Um, the round button is the record button. This is for example if you have an instrument attached, say you have a MIDI keyboard. I don't have mine on there right now, but you can also use your your keyboard keys, the the A to L if I'm correct, and the W to P. You can play on your keyboard. And if you hit record, now it will record what you're playing. So maybe we could try that. Let's select an instrument. I press this little button to make sure that we will record this specific MIDI track. Say we want to have a lead sound. Very nice. So to me this sounds a little bit loud, so I want to push down the volume a little bit. Uh, to push down the volume of the track you can go to this little box where it says zero and click and drag it down until it has a level that you feel comfortable with. Mm, now maybe let's see if we can play something. So everything I'm playing right now will be with the, with the keyboard of the laptop. can see this little MIDI pattern here that we recorded. So maybe there's something in there that you like. Maybe not. It's at least not at all in the in the rhythm. But that's how you record a MIDI track. Um, let's say we wanna we wanna make something and loop it. We want to make a MIDI track. I don't want to play it because I'm, 
a bad life player. Uh, this is hypothetically. Um, you select this part of the track again and you say insert empty MIDI clip. Okay, open this field again. Now let's see. Okay, I like the C3 most. Let's draw some notes. Okay, now we want to loop this first part because it sounds incredible. Uh, there's different things you can do. You can select this part and press Command L. And then you see that this little orange button, this button turns orange. And now it will loop this part. Yay! Now, what you could also do is say you want to have this, the first two bars. So up here you can see the amount of bars. You can see that it translates differently in seconds because the seconds are the absolute value uh, of, the, of the length of your track. And the bars are more like a relative measure. So for example, if you would have now a five bar loop is is say is say or four bar loop is 48 seconds more or less oh damn okay i hit 120 by accent is say around eight seconds and if you do 100 for example it would be almost 10 seconds so the bars are relative the seconds are an absolute measure um, since it's a 4-4 four, four bar loop you would see the uh, you would see Ableton splitting them up in these sort of like fragments with colors it's easier um, yeah, but let's see, we want to have, we want to maybe have this loop go on for the first, uh, first four bars. So let's split this clip by selecting uh, the end of the first bar and press command E or right click and say uh, now I should right click and say split. We already split it, so we couldn't do that anymore. Then you select it by uh, clicking where it presses this little hand. It shows this little grabbing hand, and you can select it with that. And hit Command D, or say duplicate, or you copy by Command C, and select the part that you want to put it in, and hit Command V. And now, if you wanna, if you wanna loop this all, you can select this whole part. I mean, now it is already being looped. Let's say I guess, and you can loop it, or loop this, or loop this. This is basically the whole looping kind of field. Yeah. Mm. I see that there's, if there's people viewing that want to say something, you can always ask things. Um, um, 
uh, I didn't announce this anywhere because I already did this kind of live stream before but uh, I'm happy with your questions and uh, can always reach out so then okay now we have this little loop let's play it let's drag this field a bit lower turn off the metronome now we'll just continue yay if you don't want to hear it in the project you can click this orange button where it says the one from it's the first track and you can take it off <sighs> nice if you want to single it out which makes more sense if you have other tracks open you can press this S button and we'll turn on. Once again, if you were trying to play with your keys, and you don't hear anything, make sure that you have this little key button turned on and that is orange and then you can play sounds on your keyboard. Now if you don't want that to happen, you can also turn it off. So let's look at the audio track. Let's call this uh, MIDI synth. Um, to rename, you can press the right click and hit rename, or you can say Command R and then say, I want this to be audio. I want it to be the audio. Let's go to the audio track. Mm, to start with an audio track, we go to this left corner of the screen, check out the samples, maybe we want to have a kick sound, the kick uh, of a drum, so from the beat is the, the low bass drum kind of vibe. Let's see if we can find a nice kick great kick and put it in the project uh, with audio files you can drag a sample onto the audio track and then it will play where you drag it in on the audio track let's maybe also turn down the volume by dragging this down volume meter and let's repeat the kick uh, every, I don't know how long, maybe every bar. Let's start with that. Let's select this whole bar, so one to two, and press Command D, and it will duplicate over the first four bars. Super nice, let's see how loud we want it in the project. Let's see if we single it out, how does it sound? Okay, press the S to just hear this one, press the S for the MIDI track to just hear the MIDI track. Okay, press it again to hear both again. Sweet! Now we got a, a kick and a funky synth. Let's see. What if we put a snare in there? Okay. So what I did there, maybe nice to know. As you can see, it says drop files and devices here. So if we put a sample in there, even though we don't have a new audio track we can just drag it in there and it will create the audio track uh, automatically let's turn it down a little bit sweet got a snare and we select the snare 
select it, press command D to duplicate it. You can also right click and say duplicate. But I mean shortcuts are kind of kind of great for uh, for the whole production process. Let's call this the snare. Let's press command R and say it's a snare. Command R, call it a kick. Now maybe we want to have all the beat parts combined in a group because it's nice. So you can select multiple tracks by uh, keeping command pressed and selecting the tracks and then say right click group tracks. Cool, now we got a beat. Sweet, and as you can see what changed here, maybe I can return, undo that for a second. Um, first, the sound of the tracks went immediately to the master channel. This is the master channel. And the master channel is basically all the tracks are being combined into this master channel. So it's the end sound of the complete project, right? So now that we group these, you can also press command G as a shortcut. Now that we group these and call them beats, we see that instead of um, uh, the tracks going to master, as it did here, it's now going to the beats the beat group and then the beat is going to the master channel and so you can uh, adjust the sound for example of the entire beat or change something about the entire beat um, as a group and not only as a, as a single as a single audio track what you can also do is like uh, make them smaller if you want them to be a bit reduced in size or like make them take up less space and yeah let's see great sweet now let's see if you want to make a track an extra track you can always hit the right click and say insert MIDI track or audio track for an audio track you can just hit command T for a MIDI track you can hit command shift T it's a bit more cumbersome but it works and yeah let's see we went through this we went through this yeah so in the sample sounds you can also always upload your own samples you could I have tons of folders dragged in if you want to have uh, a folder with all your samples that you found for example on the internet or wherever you can say add folder and it opens your Mm, your finder and you can find the folder with your samples and it will add it on the site which is really easy for finding samples that you like that are more personal to you because these are all stock stock samples from Ableton so basically everyone could use them so maybe you could find your own nicer samples um, yeah and if you want to find a certain type say you want to find a guitar loop I have no idea if this will sound nice. No. But we can turn the MIDI track off. Now what's cool about Ableton is that it automatically warps the sample that you put in into the grid 
So as you can see this sample, you can see it over here when you drag it in, it has warp turned on and it was recorded on 160 BPM. So what happens is it tries to fit this faster sample into a slower song. Um, if we click on warp, it will play the sound according to the original BPM, so it will not take regard of the BPM. It would sound like this. It's way faster. But it may not fit, right now it sounds fine, but it may not fit in your project, so you may want to uh, try and see what the warp does. If it sounds a bit glitchy, you can also change the mode Beats will warp it, will warp the sample based on the 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 grid or the beats in in the in the sample, and complex normally sounds a bit more nice, very easy. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, other things you can do, you can gain your sample, you can make it lower, you can make it higher in volume. You can change that by putting in a number. You can pitch it up or down. Say you want to pitch it up three two tones or 12 to have like a full octave higher. Or maybe minus 12 to have a full octave lower. Okay. If you want to try out different warp modes, so say you want to have this sample span twice the length, you can uh, hold it where it makes this little square bracket. Hold it, press shift, and then you can drag it and it will drag out the sample. So it will sound way slower. Try to play around with these um, with with different samples and like cut them for example by pressing command E and maybe duplicate some parts can be nice. Very experimental. Mm. Sweet, so let's call this pedal steel. There's not a reason that I put all caps, but I guess it is what it is. Um, what you could also do is reverse a sample by pressing R or clicking reverse clips. Can be nice. And um, let's see if you want to if you want to duplicate the whole part that you made, if you want to say like, okay, now I have this cool loop with a snare and a kick and a guitar sample. Ah. Hey, this is not a pre-recorded... Ah, is this still working? It's not a pre-recorded video. I am doing this right now, so you can ask questions if you want. Nice that you're here. So, um, yeah, I'm doing this to, it's not a pre-recorded video, I'm doing this to download later because I'm giving workshops in 
producing and I thought it would be nice for uh, people to get into the interface a little bit before following a workshop so that's why if you have questions then let me know uh, I have it open so thank you so much appreciate it if you want to um, if you want to duplicate a whole part that you just made what you can do is uh, hit this loop that you made and press over here and you can hit command D and then duplicate the entire entire loop that you made and now we'll duplicate all the parts so not only the guitar but also the kicks and the snare which can be really nice if you want to find out how things sound when for example you want to turn off the snare in one part mm. if you want to not delete it but see how it sounds if you turn off for example the snares in the last four bars two bars yeah. you can uh, select a part and press zero or say deactivate activate deactivate but zero is the quicker way and then see how it sounds when you easy way to uh, to check what you're doing is nice or not or to for example make some variations in the loop that you've created now let's see maybe we want to put in a hi-hat in the in the beat we created a track by hitting command T and then press command R and say hi-hat Say you want to have a closed hi-hat, let's see if this works. A little harsh, but I guess it works. You can drag it in. Now, people have asked me why I use a make, I use, I'm, I'm using beats or I'm using s samples for, for beats, but I'm not really using the, the drums as an instrument, but I'll show you too, because it's actually pretty convenient, but somehow I just never, got into doing that really um, but I will show you in a bit because it's using drums as an instrument is nicer in the sense that you can see everything as a MIDI uh, file or MIDI clip instead of these loose uh, samples it depends on what you like I like about using samples like this because I can see what's going on, it feels nice to see it. And also, uh, it helps with like, everything has its separate track. So I have a hi-hat track and I have a snare and a kick. Um, if you wanted to create a beat with, a, as a, with an instrument track, what you could do is add a MIDI track, we'll go to drums, Say you want to have a 808 core kit. Let's see what it sounds like. Sounds great. Um, what you could do is insert a MIDI file. And then you see all the different drums on, uh, you see all the different drums on the piano keys. So you have a bass drum, a clap, hi-hat. I would actually say that maybe it's nicer to start with. Um, you can just... Oh, let's turn off the beat for a bit. The bass kick is a little bit, a little bit soft, but... can select hit command E to split a clip and press command D to 
duplicate it and work with the closed hi-hat let's see let's put them on every what is that eighth note quarter note i have to eighth note i think well can be nice You can change the grid view. So here, say eight. Then you can see it's on the eighth note. Um, I have it on sixteen now. I don't know what the standard is. Let me know if that's the standard, maybe. Um, yeah, I'm producing all my music in Ableton with Ableton, and I'm been doing that for the past some years I think Ableton works great for me I think any dog could work but um, somehow I got into Ableton and now now that's my go-to go-to thing but um, would also be curious to work with logic but so far it's been Ableton okay so let's forget about this pedal steel guitar for a bit We had this old MIDI clip. Yeah, basically, whether you use samples or, or... God, that sounds awful now with what's going on here. Ugh. Damn, I have to say that the beat sounds way nicer when it's... Uh in this drum rack, but that's more about, I think, how I put it in there than, <laughs> than that the samples are much better. Yeah, sweet. Um, so now we went over having a MIDI track, an audio track, putting instruments on your MIDI track, putting drums on your MIDI track. What's cool about using a drum rack also is that you can change the velocity so the velocity is how hard, um, how hard a sample is being, um, how hard a sample is being played. So if you have the hi hats, for example, you can change the velocity for every other note, and then it will sound a bit, it will interchange a bit with how hard the sample is being played. Mm. Let me see if we can find them here. Maybe you can hear it a little bit. Maybe if I single out the hi-hats here. Some are played a bit softer. It doesn't make a huge difference. Um, yeah, so now we got, got a beat. Got a beat and a synth. Um, cool thing is uh, audio effects. Let's start with the with the two main ones that every project is opening with. They're on a return track. So these tracks over here are return tracks. What happens is if you have an audio effect on there. So the first one is a reverb. If you send the uh, sound from the from a track to the return track, which you would do with the little square boxes that you see over there, you can send the volume or send sort of like a separate track with the same sound to the return track. And what what it does is that that part will go through the reverb and it will play the same sound but with the reverb fully onto it. So this is the sound without the reverb. Maybe we can find a better example because somehow this one is already a little bit reverby maybe. 
Okay, maybe this one. Okay, cool. So now there's a, f the, a fully duplicate. If it's on zero, it means that like the same exact same volume track is being put to the reverb to the reverb return track uh, to add on to it. So it doesn't modify the original sound, but it stacks it on top. This reverb layer. Yeah. Wow. Um, what's important for return tracks is always that you have the wet on 100%, otherwise you're just duplicating. But if you would have it on this, then basically it would add the same sound for 50%. And I mean, it just makes it messy, you don't want that. It doesn't matter too much, but it's just not, it's not nice. So. Put the reef if you have a return track, always have the wet on 100%. Uh, you can adjust the reverb sound. Let's put it up fully. You can adjust the reverb sound. Maybe we'll go t in, into that uh, in a little bit. And the second return track is a delay can find over here. I mean, the delay you can find over here, but you can uh, add it to your audio track or MIDI track over here. It sounds really weird. Sweet. So if you put it both on, Reaver basically makes it sound a little bit more spacious and the delay will... Uh... Hey, thank you so much for joining and uh, hope to see you. Hope to see you again. Um, so sweet. Um, people joining. Let me see. It's the most annoying synth in the world, but also kind of nice, I guess. I kind of like it. Um, yeah, so we can adjust the audio effects on the return tracks. We can adjust the reverb. We could increase the size or the decay. The decay of a reverb is basically like how long, how long the sound will sort of like resonate or continue. So if you increase that a lot. You can hear that it goes like. Come, like it goes on for a while. Let's keep it around there. Can make it more stereo. Have it go wider. Diffuse is doing that as well a little bit I think. you can put a filter on there uh, if you turn it off if you have a low cut it will basically only have the reverb in the higher frequencies on a high cut it will only have the reverb resonating on the lower frequencies I'll show you that in a bit for the delay let's turn off the reverb now it's synced with the rhythm and it's on left and right, It's uh, it has the same speed. If you hit ping pong, it will go way more stereo. You can sync it differently. This is basically after how much time it will start the delay yeah you can also unsync it you have to work with me milliseconds
which can be nice too. But let's put it on sync right now. Can increase the feedback, which makes the delay go come back more often. So now we'll come back and come back and come back and we'll feedback. So let's leave that a little bit low. And these are the return tracks. Uh, you can add a return track if you want another sound effect. Oh. Add a re return track if you want some other audio effect on there. But um, I think for initially the reverb and the delay tracks are already quite nice. Quite a nice addition to work with. If you want to hear just the reverb, you can even single out the reverb or the delay. And then you can hear better maybe what's going on. Also with the filter, for example, say you have a low cut filter. Just hear the high frequencies. Or just the low frequencies. Okay, let's hear everything again. Sweet. Now, so we got a reverb and a delay. I'm not sure how long I will continue this actually, but uh, seems like it's working out all right. Um, reverb and delay are audio effects. And there's m so many audio effects in Ableton. You can find a uh, lot, of, lot of different audio effects. But could be nice to show is an EQ. So let's go to audio effects and go to EQ and filters and try to EQ it and put it on your MIDI synth. And what's happening now, let's ignore this. Does this work? It's a bit it's a bit big anyway. Let's just focus on this. This is the EQ over here. And what you can see is uh is a horizontal line with the frequencies and uh a vertical line with decibels or it's basically like the loudness and Let's sing out. What you can see here is how the sound is moving in frequencies and, and the levels of, of, of the sound, right? So, if we want to cut out all the lower frequencies, because, okay, so first maybe it would be nice to know, the lower the frequencies, the lower the sound. So this part will just have like the lower sounds and the higher you go we'll have the higher sounds so in the end it will just be like some sort of like very high hissing kind of sound uh, you can see it pretty well if for example you would go to your first first point and change it in this shape which you could see here also when we saw the reverb it had a similar shape. Um, and now we're cutting out some of the lower frequencies and see what it does. So this is it, the usual, how it sounds usually, initially. You can tell that all the lower sounds are being taken out. And in the end, there's just some... Somehow the first, I would say that the first 100 hertz, hertz, it's not doing too much. Okay, let's change it back. Cool. What you can do also is like, if you have the initial EQ8, this is the initial thing. So you can push certain sounds, take them all down. You can also
what happens here is that you can see that this little bound here is sort of pushing the frequencies in this bell shape. If you increase the Q, we'll get the parts that are being pushed of the frequencies are way smaller, it's way more precise. And if you lower it, it will become more and more frequencies in the bound that are being pushed up or down. Here you're lowering the volume of certain frequencies. Here you're pushing it. Now let's see what happens if we take down the high frequencies. If you're DJing or have some experience with this, you might recognize this as a filter also. Mm. Yeah, basically going can cut out higher frequencies. So, if you just want to hear what's going on, you can press the little headphone mode, but it only makes sense, or it mostly makes sense in uh, hearing, hearing everything in reference to other sounds. Um, yeah, that's an EQ. And then a filter that you see here, an auto filter is basically a simplified version of that in a way, where you find the same thing of the frequencies on the horizontal axis. But it's not like, it also works a little bit with, uh, with pushing up volume and stuff. It's got a, is it resonance? Resonance, I think. And a filter is basically what uh, all the DJs are using by you can let it cut come up softly and include more and more frequencies and it gets this gets a little bit of this sort of exciting sky, uh, exciting effects um, you can also do it the other way around Play around a little bit with the uh, with frequencies and the EQs can be nice to uh, to check it out. Um, there's one thing that could be nice to see is this LFO. Uh, now it will per in one fourth of a bar. It will go. This bound will basically go up and down according to a rate that you um, that you specified here. So this is a full bar. It will go up and down in a full bar depending on the amount. If you want to see that happen, you can also whoa, find the LFO tool, go to the search bar, find the modulator, go to the LFO tool. You can map the LFO to your filter. Whoa, and now you can see it. Now you can see it happening. Damn, that's really fast. This is basically doing the same as what would happen here. This is the rate, the depth is the level. So if you put it on 100%, it will go 
super wide. If you put it little, it will only go for little bits of the frequency spectrum. Cool. So we went through an EQ, reverb, you can also find the reverb here. If you would put it on a track immediately, what happens is that it's not adding to the sound, but it will adjust the sound in itself. Um, so for example, if you have a reverb, you put it on here, then dry wet will mean that 55% of, uh, of the track will be now this reverb sound, will have the reverb sound, and 45 will be dry, which means that it's just a yeah, the dry sound. Not sure how to explain it differently. Now you don't hear any of the dry. Now the whole track is going through the reverb. If that's what you want, you can do that. If you want to edit, you can use the reverb from the return track. Mm. Yeah, what else is there? Maybe we can do a little recap because I think this was enough maybe to uh, hopefully get you going first a bit. What we did today was we looked into audio tracks, MIDI tracks, the whole control panel here on the side. Ooh, there's maybe one thing I should still show. What you could try is this little C um, adjusts the panning of the track. So you can put it to the left. And then you hear it on the left side only. But you can also put it on the right. And then you just hear it on the, on the right side. You can play with it. can do it's like uh, you can also press a number you can type 50 50 or minus 50 minus 50 is for left completely left 50 is for completely right anything in between will make it a bit more go a bit in between your different stereo effects if you don't know what stereo and mono is stereo is the uh, mono will Keep it all in the middle. Uh, stereo, you could have certain sounds that are in the in the middle, and then some sounds that sound stronger on the right side, and some sounds that sound stronger on the left side, and it creates a bit more of like a a wider a wider idea. Wait, a wider a wider sound soundscape. Yeah, I think that's the last thing. Uh, for these little controls you can record a track on this side maybe in the next video I would show how to record from audio um, where you would probably need an interface for and a mic or your MacBook or computer speaker um, you can single out tracks you can turn tracks on and off can adjust the volume. You can also adjust the master volume if it all became a bit too loud. I would try to keep it around zero uh, or not push it down too much because then you would later need to rework that. Mm. We checked return tracks. We didn't go to session view. I don't use it so much. Um, maybe there's other great tutorials, but maybe I will make something about it. Um, we checked to play keys with your keyboard, looping your part. I will go through all of this another time. I never use this, so I don't know what that is. I think maybe you can adjust the looping. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's good to know. I didn't know that actually. Um, yeah, so this is basically for the length of the loop, and I guess this is the starting point of the loop. Nice to know. 
Mm. Play, stop. You can find different samples in your samples folder. You can find audio effects in your audio effects folder. Instruments that you can put on MIDI tracks, it's like software instruments. Drums, different drum kits that you can use as a, as a MIDI instrument. And you can, of course, add your own folder of sounds that you like, that you found on the internet or whatsoever. Make sure that it's in WAV or um, in MP3 format. If you want to do video editing, you can even put a MP4 uh, a file on a track and then you can work with the video. I'm not sure if I have an example of that. Let's see. Uh, I'm not even sure if I'm... Ah, that's me. I've used this. And then you can change that. That was from another live stream. Be weird. Yeah. So I guess that's it. Um, ah, yeah. And the BPM here, of course, and the metronome. Ah, wie is Sinti? 2019. Sweet. Leuk dat je er bent. Ja, ik ben... Um, you don't have to talk English. But I will reply in English, maybe. Uh, um, actually, in the last seconds of the stream, because I was doing a little run through the interface, um, I wanted to upload it on YouTube such that people can watch it. But... Nice that you're here. I was uh, rounding up. Yeah. Sweet. Then, hope to see you next time. Next time I might look a bit more into um, um, connecting an audio interface. That could be nice. I'm working with an audio interface, the Motu M4. But there's different audio interfaces and let's set up the hardware that you can use with Ableton. And then maybe we'll also look into automation but i don't know i can uh see it at that time i hope you're having a great night thank for thank you for joining in uh christian and uh see you soon